Hello. So in this video, we are going to be talking about solving absolute value functions. So in particular, as an example, let's say we have this f of x, right, 3x minus absolute value of minus 2x plus 1, all plus 4. Now, if we wanted to plug in a value, we know how to compute that, right? If we wanted to rewrite this as a piecewise function, we could do that. But what about if we want to know when does f of x equal 0, right? Which is a very common thing. We did this a bunch of times in all our other functions. This is pretty sort of standard question to ask. Unfortunately, this is deceptively difficult here, right? Because we can't simply undo absolute value, right? Normally, we would set this whole thing equal to 0 and start moving stuff around and undoing operations and stuff to try to isolate x and get an answer. But we can't do that with absolute value because with absolute value, we don't know whether the interior is positive or negative when there's still an x in there. So if the absolute value still has variables inside, we don't know whether it's positive or negative, and thus we can't undo it like we can normal operations. But that means that in order to solve this question, we need to figure out what values of x inside the absolute value part gives us a positive versus a negative interior, right? This should sound vaguely familiar from the piecewise function. And in fact, we'll talk about that closer to the end of this video. So looking at this function then, we want to solve for when is the interior positive or not negative, really. So we take that interior, the minus 2x plus 1, right, this, this piece that's inside the absolute value, have that greater than or equal to 0, and solve that. So that's true when x is less than or equal to 1 half, OK? Then, using that bit of information, we can say, OK, when is this thing negative? Well, we would solve it the same way, and we get, OK, it's negative when x is greater than 1 half. OK. Now, looking at just the time when the inside is not negative, right? When the absolute value does nothing, what do we have as a function? Well, we replace it with the parentheses, simplify it down, and eventually that gets us to 5x plus 3. Now, again, our, our goal here, right, is to know when is f of x is 0. So now that we've sort of simplified f of x, we no longer have absolute value because we're saying, OK, only consider the situation where x is less than or equal to 1 half specifically so now we know that the absolute value is not negative. Now we can actually set this equal to 0 and solve. So setting it equal to 0, move the 3 over, divide by 5, we get, ah, x is, less than, x is equal to negative 3 fifths. But remember, this was working under assumption. In particular, this was under the assumption that x is less than or equal to 1 half. So we have to actually make sure that the answer that we got actually does obey that assumption, meaning that we need to check that we're still in the right domain, i.e. that negative 3 fifths satisfies the requirement that x is less than or equal to 1 half. But negative 3 fifths is indeed less than or equal to 1 half. So that means this really is an answer. This is a solution to the question, when is f of x equal to 0? And if we took that negative 3 fifths and plugged it into the very top up here, we would indeed get 0 as, a, as an answer. But what about the other situation, right? We have that the inside of the absolute value is negative when x is greater than 1 half. And when it's negative, we multiply by that negative 1 out front. So again, now that we know what the interior is, we can replace it, right, the absolute value with parentheses, in this case, multiplying by negative 1 so that we actually have that uh, making things positive, and simplify. So moving through, right, we distribute the negative 1, we put our terms together, we get x plus 5 as our end result. Again, now that we have no absolute value, we can actually set this thing equal to 0 and solve. x is negative 5. But again, this was under an assumption, right? This is only true if x is greater than 1 half, and the x we got was negative 5. Well, negative 5 is not greater than 1 half, so this is not a solution, OK? So there's two sort of parts to this. We have to look at, we have to sort of reduce to a case where the x value, right, is greater than or between some values, whatever, to make the interior something that we know, positive or negative, so that we can then Right? Once we know whether the interior is positive or negative, we can simplify the function accordingly to get rid of those absolute values. And that will give us a thing that we can actually solve, getting an x value. But that always comes with this sort of requirement. right? What x values did we restrict to? And so we have to check that at the end when we get a solution. Now, this is sort of the classic way of doing this. But alternatively, we could actually consider the piecewise function form sort of directly. So we know how to get the piecewise function form, and it's really the same thing we were just doing. We 
find where the interior is positive or negative and sort of accordingly simplify the equation with those two domains, right? So we would get exactly what we got. When x is less than or equal to 1 half, we got 5x plus 3. When x is greater than 1 half, we got x plus 5, right? And then we would take each of those sub-functions, right, each of the pieces that we got, so 5x plus 3 and the x plus 5, and we'd figure out when those things are 0, right? So we would take the 5x plus 3, set it equal to 0, and x plus 5, set it equal to 0. And that would get us, right, the negative 3 fifths and the negative 5, just like before. But now we would check that. So we'd take those values, like negative 3 fifths and negative 5, and plug them into f of x, right? And remembering the piecewise function, right, when we plug in, say, negative 3 fifths, that means that we have to check where it actually lands. So if we are plugging in negative 3 fifths, we go, okay, is it less than or equal to 1 half or greater than 1 half? It's less than 1 half. And so then we would plug it into this function. So if we did 5 times negative 3 fifths plus 3, that equals 0. That means that that is indeed a solution, right? Then we would check the other one, negative 5. Well, we would do the same deal. We'd say, okay, is negative 5 less than or equal to 1 half or greater than 1 half? It's less than 1 half, so we'd plug it into this top function. But 5 times negative 5, that's negative 25 plus 3, definitely not 0. And so that is not a solution, right? So the key here is that when we plug it back in, we have to check to see which function it lands in. Because the reason it's going to be not a solution is that it's basically landing in the wrong subfunction according to its domain. Right? We got the negative 5 as a solution from the second one, but when we tried to plug it in, the domain said that it would go and be computed in the first one, and that's why it didn't work. So don't just assume it goes to the correct subfunction. Right, The whole point is to check which subfunction we're actually landing in according to the domain. Okay, So what we do? Well, we talked about how to solve uh, actual absolute value functions when we're given sort of when is f of x zero or five or 22 or something, right? This idea of we're given some value that the f of x needs to equal, then it gets complicated because we can't just undo the absolute value because there's no sort of way of knowing what the absolute value does unless we know what the inside is. And so that's when we break it up into when is the inside positive and negative, just like we did with piecewise functions. And then we solve for the zeros under those assumptions, but then we have to check to make sure they actually obey the assumptions. We have to check that the x values that we get are actually in the right domain. And a sort of nicer way, arguably, to do this is to actually just use the piecewise form directly, because we're doing all of the same stuff, so it's sort of easier to just write it out explicitly and have it there to keep track, okay? So that is that. <laughs>